Raider. Oakland, L.A., Oakland, Vegas, Raider Nation, wherever, forever. You got your old Uncle Mosh and Raiders fan radio from Murph's Man Cave taking a lighter journey into the dark side. Sit back, put your feet up, pop a top, and enjoy the ride. Here we go! We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization. And you tell them one thing, just win, baby. Way up the middle, intercepted to the piano at the 50, high running down, Hogan football, and I think Hogan victory. The Austin Raiders have scored on the most singing, unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Well, I love this team. I think this team can win. I think this team can win. What is up, Raider Nation? Your old buddy Murph back once again for what we hope to be a fantastic episode of Raiders Fan Radio, episode number 149 of Raiders Fan Radio, coming to you live from Murph's Fan Cave. So a little bit different of a break in format tonight. Uh, Myself and Swago and Uncle Mosh are kind of taking the night off, kind of recharging our batteries a little bit after an amazing but very long uh, travel week and weekend through the Bay Area and, and through Oakland and and then hit right into the show last week. So anyways, we're just kind of take a little bit of downtime, recharge our creative energy a little bit. But in the meantime, I wanted to honor your voicemails. We got so many great voicemails this week, so we'll call this a Sea of Fans show. And uh, we'll go ahead and go through definitely all of your emails and voicemails that came in this week. Also be on the lookout for an interview I'm going to do with our buddy Scott Winter. It's been a minute since we caught up with Scott. Scotty uh, Scotty and I are going to do it tomorrow night, so probably won't post up on your feed until Friday morning or Friday afternoon anyways, Uh, but always good to hear from Scott, always insightful, always incredibly well-versed on everything about the team and, of course, the relocation to Las Vegas and uh, and the the impact and the the wake of of what's left from the city of Oakland and all that good stuff. If you follow Scott on Twitter, uh, you know that he's just an absolute wealth of information on that topic, and so we're going to look forward to catching up uh, with him and just kind of checking in and and seeing what he's up to, so uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, Episode number 149 you know we always reference back our episode number to something significant within Raider Nation and so it's 149 so let's go to uh the most recent NFL draft and we're talking the 2019 draft and with the 149th pick the Raiders select Hunter Renfro that's right also known as Frotap uh Hunter Renfro selected number 149 so and and man much love to the rookie man he's he's doing great and all of our rookie class is, frankly, looking pretty freaking awesome at this point. So, all right, so our Oakland Raiders are 5-4. and four. Uh, Got a big game coming up this week on our mini bye week uh, at fresh off the win against the uh, San Diego. Yeah, 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 San Diego, not L.A. Chargers. Uh, but anyway, so uh, up next we have the Cincinnati Bengals, which is our third straight home game. You know, these are the games that you should win, right? If we're a championship team, uh, or even if we're a team with any kind of playoff aspirations at all, frankly, guys, we should blow these these knuckleheads out. We should win this game like thirty to six or something, right? That's the way that it should be. Now we'll see if it if it ends up that way or not. Certainly, but. All the things are lining up. All the tools are in place uh, for the Raiders to have a big win and move to 6-4. and four. And with the Chiefs losing at Tennessee this last week, looking pretty good for us to at least uh, challenge for the division, which is what we all want. So, anyways, before we jump, though, into that, please do us a favor and subscribe in all the ways possible to the Murph's Fan Cave feed. Uh, that is on your favorite audio podcast service, like you're listening to me now. So, please, on whether it's Apple or it's... Uh, I was going to say Apple or iTunes. Gosh, whether it's Apple or Google, Stitcher, uh, Podcast Addict, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the millions of ways that you can consume an audio, Spreaker, all the millions of ways you can consume an audio podcast, please subscribe to us there. And then also do us a favor and mash the button, as the kids say, on the YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave, M-U-R-F-S Fan Cave, and support our efforts and initiative there. So thank you to all of you so much for checking us out. And uh, without further ado, let's go 
ahead. Go, go ahead. Let's go ho ahead. Let's ho ahead. Let's go ahead and get to those uh, here in the Sea of Fans mailbag. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's tied, he's thrown. It is. All right, you can reach us anytime on the Raiders Fan Radio Hotline at 909-345-3346. That's 909-345-3346. Uh, and if you call and leave us a message and we play it three times on the air, you become what we refer to as a made man or a made woman. And uh, that means you're part of the family, means you're part of the crew. And uh, so the uh, other way you can reach us is by emailing us a nondescript amount of times, and then we will refer to you also that way as a made man or a made woman like uh, Queen Haley of Scotland. That's right. You become part of the crew that way. So we always start off uh, this segment with our uh, with our emails. And so uh, I'm going to I'm going to call in some some backup on this one. You know, we other than Uncle Mosh, everybody around here struggles to read emails. So uh, I'm going to call in for a little backup, and I'm going to go ahead and hit up uh, what we call, or what I call, or what I guess a lot of people call him. He's my mini-me. So let's go ahead and get Vinny in here and help me read some emails. Yo, Vinny! Yeah! Hey, man. Come help me read emails. All right. Hurry, 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 hurry. Raider Nation's waiting on you. Okay, I'm coming. Okay. You, you remember when, um, put those headphones on. You there? Say hi to the, say hi to the, to the RFR listening audience. What's up, our, for our listening audience? There you go. That's, this is Vinny. This is my youngest son. Uh, he's 13 years old, and he reads gooder than the rest of us in the house uh, that aren't Uncle Mosh. How are you, Vin? I'm fantastic, Father. You're doing good. Did you get? Uh, did you enjoy your new Raiders swag that you got from California? Yes, I did, and I got some Giants swag too. You got some Giants swag too. That's right, because the Giants are your favorite baseball team, aren't they? Oh yeah. All right. What you're telling Raider Nation about your new shirt that you sported at school yesterday? Well, um, it said, just win, baby, and no one commented on it, but I'm sure all the Broncos fans were just grumbling. They are going, ah, oh, the Raiders. That's what that's what Broncos fans do. They grumble. Yeah, they grumble. That's yeah. all they do. They don't do anything else except grumble. Except grumble. That's right. All right, so here comes the first one. This is going to be from our buddy Al Romero in Mo Valley, California. All right, there you go, Vinny. Read that. <clears throat> Hi, RFR people. Representing the channel, you now have over 50 new, gu- new guys subscribers. Lots of people asking me about the shirt, and I let them know about you guys. But I think a little bit uh, early for the tailgate. Can't wait. Go Raiders. Thanks to my wife of 32 years of putting up with this. <laughs> <laughs> and so Al sent a picture, didn't he? Yes, he did. And what is that picture? I've described the picture to the listening audience. Okay, so he's standing triumphantly in front of the stadium. What stadium? It's a new stadium. It's the new stadium. It's in in Ooh. construction. So he's in Las Vegas. And what's he wearing? He's wearing Get Made. Get Made. That's right. Because you get made by calling and leaving a message three times on the show or by uh, getting your emails read, right? Indeed. Awesome job. So we appreciate Al. Thank you very much for the email, my friend. And uh, Vinny, you want to help me with one more? Of course. All right. Here you go. Get that one. All right. Ooh, longer one. Yeah, it's okay. a long one. Murph, Uncle Mosh, Swag Jeff, and Raider Nation. The last two weeks were great for, Na- for, for Raider Nation. The rookies just keep growing and getting better. And the team as a whole is swelling. Whatever. It says gelling. 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 Yeah, that's what teams do. They gel. It means they're coming together. Ah. It means they're playing together. He keep just going. taught me something. There you okay. go. Hey, he taught you something. Who is that? This Who's it from? This is yeah. Frank. Frank. You just taught Vinny something, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Okay, they've won back-to-back games, and if they win the next week, that is called a streak. It's happened before. I hate to say it, but maybe that extended road trip might have been uh, reaped rewards. Now, we have a disproportionate amount of home games against mostly teams that are struggling. The only team with a winning record, as of now, is Kansas City and their wonderkind and their wonderkind QB, May even be human after all. Last week, he threw for about 450 yards and a loss. They're waiting for us. Let me say, your coverage of the Belenikov Foundation, the tailgate, and the game made me, and I'm sure many others, envious. Swag Jeff seemed in awe of the whole experience. Can't wait for the bungles. 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 That's the nickname for the Bengals. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, the Bungles. The Bungles to come down. 
I'm amazed through how ticking heads are beginning. Talking to co- heads. Man, I'm not good. It's your God. You're doing fine. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm amazed how through how talking heads are becoming beginning to come around to giving our Raiders some love. Well, I suppose better late than never. Raider Nation forever. Frank. Awesome, Frank. Appreciate the email there, buddy. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, everybody's starting to, you know what a talking head is? That's, uh, that's no. like people, like you see on the news or on our sports shows that we watch oh, all the time. Yeah, what is yeah, it? Yeah. What do you always see? It's a bunch of heads, right? Yeah. And when they're talking, so yeah. the talking heads, it's just like the uh, people on TV, like I the see. people in the media. Yeah, so everybody's coming around starting to love on the Raiders now because we're doing good. Yeah. And we're like, where the heck you been this whole time? Yeah, mm-hmm. like you can't just come in and love on us when we're doing well. You got to love on them all the time. Like bandwagoners. They're bandwagoners. Exactly. Atta boy. Good job, Vinny. Woo. You get it. How old are you, 13? Yes, sir. And how many of these knuckleheads don't even get it, man? All of them. All, all the knuckleheads. That's exactly right. Yeah. Knuckleheads are batting a 1,000. <laughs> Jackasses. Amen. All right. Go Raiders. Thank you for helping me with the emails. Of course, anytime. All right. Love you. Love you, too. See you. All right, we got one more for you here in terms of emails, and that is from our buddy Paul in Shropshire, Mississippi, because he is west of Birmingham. Evening, fellas. Hope you are well. What a Thursday night that was, or Friday morning for some of us. Another nail-biting, stressful, but fantastic Raiders win. We were ahead in the game despite not being able to find any early rhythm, but thanks to Eric Harris, we found ourselves in a positive position. The game developed into more of a shootout in the second half, and thankfully we've got one of the most exciting rookies the NFL has seen in a generation in Josh Jacobs, who punched the ball in for us. It has been said the blocking for him was outstanding. Absolutely. Alec Ingold is killing it. The excitement of the go-ahead score was cooled straight away through when dead-eyed Daniel Carlson missed the point after. Suddenly, we thought of a Chargers game-winning field goal was a real possibility, but the defense was excellent, and the W was ours. Really proud of everyone, but a special shout-out to Chlorlin Freddy Spills Furl, F-R-R-R-R-R-L-L-L-L, who shut up a few people with his performance, and Coach Cable, who must be walking around with a smug grin on his face. We sent a miserable-looking Rivers home to tuck in his kids for the night. If he started (laughs) as soon as he got home, he should be just about finished. A couple more injuries to contend with, but we kept going, which is a testament to the hard work of the coaches and the spirit within the squad. Interesting to read that Mark Kelly is back in training and should be available for the Chiefs. So it's just over halfway into the season, and what do we know? Well, we know that D.C. is an excellent quarterback given the right balance of personnel and system, and we most of us knew that anyways. That's what Paul says, in parentheses. That's my parentheses voice. Josh Jacobs is already Rookie of the Year. Amen, brother. Mad Max Crosby will be a seriously good player for us for years to come. The O-line is outstanding. Coach Gruden and Mike Mayock are the best duo since Pat Summerall and John Madden. Whatever season, whatever this season takes us in the future, uh, it's looking very exciting. In summary, we're coming for you, NFL. You keep throwing things at us like dumb schedules and suspensions. We'll keep picking up serious injuries and we'll keep on going. Pretty soon you'll realize every cloud has a silver and black lining and you can't stop us. Finally, I need to update you on the last sizzler scores. Ooh, good deal. Here we go. If you think it's getting close in the NFL, this is where the real competition is at. 47 shows since the first award and 41 awards in total. Big Raider Trucker, B-Dog in a Pasture, and Rev Raider are, 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 excuse me, are on three. So three total for those guys. Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider, who's no longer eligible. Mojo Raider, Eye Patch, Kevin, the Raider Nerd, Houston Raider, Steve, and Ramon have two apiece. After that, there are 20 different people with one. Thank you for your hard work as ever, fellas. It's really appreciated. Love you, Raider Nation. Sign his lordship, Paul Edgerton, Shropshire, Mississippi. Polly Award winner 2019. Sizzler scores keeper. Sizzler scorekeeper, proud made man, and one-time winner of the Raiders Fan Radio Sizzler Award. Awesome job, Paul. Appreciate that. And, man, thank you. Back at you. Love the work that you put into that. And uh, and look forward to seeing uh, who's going to get the Sizzler tonight. It's at, I don't award these very often. I think I've only ever awarded one. Uh, can you keep up with that, Paul? How many Sizzlers have I awarded? So there's, I want to, like, the Sizzler within the Sizzler. No, I'm kidding. Don't, don't do that. Don't go look that up. As I think it's just like once. So this will be like twice. So, okay. So we'll get to that here in just a second as we jump into the voicemail. So when it comes to the made men, 
Uh, you certainly can't have a, a team without a leader. And the leader of our made men and made women is the capo, the captain. We call him the capo. He is Aaron, the Q-Dog Raider. And we always kick off this segment with a call from the capo. Greetings, it's your capo and the Q-Dog Raider coming to you from the great state of Texas. Doing a little wrong work. Uh, might as well take advantage of the free weekend because we didn't have any Raider game. And it was a great win over the Los Angeles Super Chargers or whatever the hell they call them. They claim that they are. Uh, respect goes out to my man Mojo Raider for starting his pod show. Uh, appreciate it being a guest on it, and hopefully we can keep the Raider fan radio family growing by leaps and bounds. Now, let's get down to business. Uh, Sonny Murph, Mosh, uh, little swag Jeff, Raider Nation. Um, wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that, you know, we're trying out some uh, new blood in the secondary because I tell you what, the uh, the – the injuries are coming fast and furious, but you know what? We're not leaving anything to guesswork, and I appreciate Mike Mayock turning over all stones in order to shore up that secondary. We're going up to play the Cincinnati Super Bungles, and I think that might be a W. But after watching uh, my beloved Kentucky Wildcats lose to Tennessee with a wide receiver and quarterback and then watch them lose to Evansville at home in basketball, we take nothing for granted. So that's all I got this week. Here's one for you, Murph. Instead of having – uh, the Mount Rushmore. Let's go with the Supreme Court. Nine all-time Raiders. That's all I got. Rue. Awesome stuff there from Aaron, the Q Dog Raider. Uh, wow, that's that's fun. Okay, so nine. Gosh, let's see. Let's just go. Uh, okay, so spot me, Al. So that means I got eight left. Uh, so since I got so much room, I'm going to go with both the coaches. So let's go, uh, Rich, really, if you count Al, he's a coach too. So let's go Al Madden Flores. Okay, so we got one, two, three there. Um, and this has nothing to do with Flores in terms of his Hall of Fame qualifications because we're t- if you just isolate him as a Raiders coach, absolutely Hall of Famer. We're going to pretend like he never went to Seattle. Okay, so Al Madden Flores uh, are up there. Uh, Stabler's my all-time favorite, so I got to put uh, Snake up there as well. <sighs> Got to put Jack Tatum on there. Uh, He's just really epitomized what those defenses were uh, of the 70s, and so I got to put put him on there. Uh, Let's go Timmy Brown. Got to represent Los Angeles and even the most recent or semi-recent current recent Super Bowl team. We'll go with that. Gosh, uh, man, I really want to put Willie Brown on there, but I really want to put Fred Bolitnikoff on there too. I don't want to be a prisoner of the recency because Willie just passed. Uh, rest in peace. So let me move on. Let me move past that. Let me come back to that. Charles Woodson. I think Charles Woodson, even though despite his uh, uh, his long weekend in Green Bay, I think you got to put Charles Woodson on there. Howie Long is really hard not to put on there. Uh, I've never put Howie Long on any list, um, but again, representing Los Angeles, represented the last Super Bowl team, still flies the flag. I think that I, you got to have Howie on there. So Gosh, I hate to make this Willie Brown versus Fred Bolitnikoff. Maybe uh, I don't want to take Flores off either. Oh, gosh, guys. Um, I can't take Jack Tatum off. This this is just stupid. This is why these things are so hard, because someone always gets left out. Gosh, I hate to. I, mean, I don't want to take Willie Brown off. I feel like a jerk for doing that. But I I can't not have a Super Bowl MVP on there either. I can't not have Bolitnikoff on there. Gosh. Uh, I'm taking 10. No, that's a cop out. I'm taking ten. We're putting. We're putting. All, uh, I'm putting uh, the Supreme Court plus one. All right, we're getting Willie Brown and Polenikov out of me. Sorry for riding the fence. All right, next up here we got our buddy Mojo Raider, and I got to give Mojo a lot of love, man. He um he started his own thing. Uh, if you look at uh, the YouTube's. Uh, you can find him at Mojo's Pod Show. That's M O J O E S Mojo's Pod Show, and uh, he's on there, of course, talking about the Raiders. And uh, he's got just a couple episodes or two or three episodes in now. And this last one, he had Aaron the Q Dog Raider on, and you know it was a lot of fun, man. Uh, being highly familiar with those two guys, uh, watching that YouTube video, watching those two guys chop it up, man. Very fun. Uh, I mean, they're, they're both really funny guys and, uh, Mojo, you're doing an excellent job producing that show. I highly recommend it, especially for those of you that are familiar with our show, you know, these two guys, uh, and you know, Mojo. So definitely support him. Go to YouTube. It's Mojo's pod show. But that said, 
Mojo, you're no longer eligible for the for the uh, for the Sizzlers and stuff. You know what I mean? You're kind of like you're kind of like right I, there's like Capo, right? And then like you're kind of like like right after there now. Uh, you know what I mean? Like we got to disqualify you because you're you're kind of a pro now. You know what I mean? Like and you're you're kind of good at this. So it's almost like uh, you know how in on the Jim Rome show how JT the Brick is no longer eligible to win the Smack Off. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like you know from now on, Mojo, you stand on your own. But man, you're doing a great job doing it. So uh, Mojo defends our freedom every day when he goes to work and when he goes to play radio uh he does a darn fine job also so let's hear from our buddy mojo murph mosh swaggy j k Petro, big raider trucker <laughs> twin johnny raider ramon hey it's mojo coming to you on veterans day i want to give respect to anybody who's currently serving anybody who has served and any family member that knows what it's like for uh, their loved one to be deployed in, in support of this great nation so from me to you, hand, salute, ready, two. Hey, I'm calling to talk about these edge rushers from Thursday night. Mad Max and, and Cleland Furl, these dudes were absolutely on fire against the Chokers. They, had, they were in River's face all night, man. It was great to see. I think what we're seeing is the beginning of a, of a one-two punch, uh, epic, Edge rushers for years to come, man. I, I can't wait to see where they're going. They're, they're really like a dynamic duo in the making, man. If uh, if you're not just a passive football fan and you like watching film, just go watch some from Thursday night. Keep your eye on those edge rushers. Hey, here's to another win against the Bungles this weekend. Here's to an awesome playoff run. And here's to John Gruden and Mike Mayock for returning this team to come relevancy. On. As always, Raider Nation, just win, baby. Mojo, out. Good job, Mojo. Appreciate the call. And yeah, come on, man. I love it how they're referring to themselves as salt and pepper, man. That's the best. Uh, Farrell and, and Mad Max Crosby, man. Good stuff there. I appreciate the call, Mojo. And much love to you, man. Good luck with the channel. You're doing a great job. Raiders! This is Raider Trucker Dan. Hey, Merv and 10K people. We, we got the win. By any means, just win, baby. It was a, probably the best team win I've seen all year. And against a good football team, the Chargers are very talented. And uh, our, our D-line got a lot of pressure on Rivers. We got him to some turnovers uh, early with Eric Harris, two interceptions, one to pick six. Almost had another one. You know, he had another one, but then was just got taken back because of an offside penalty. But, um, but, wow, you know, the Raiders played their hearts out. Carr was vintage Derek Carr in the fourth quarter. And uh, Josh Jacobs with the walk-off for the win, you know, and the defense had a – Final stop and interception by uh, Carl Joseph. He had one taken away from him, and then he had this one to seal the game. Uh, and then Jacobs ran final first down to win for good. But, you know, we're 5-4. and four. You know, we got uh, well, basically a mini bye, and then we got the uh, week from this Sunday is we will play the Cincinnati Bengals, who are winless as of right now. And then we play the Jets, who only have one or two wins. So Raiders, I think we have a really good shot to go 7-4 and four with a four-game win streak heading into – being very confident, a lot of momentum going into Arrowhead, place the cars never won before, and I think he can finally get it done. And and uh, you know, I think that game could get flexed to Sunday night, hopefully. And I hope you know we can steal the AFC West from the Chiefs. <laughs> you know, so. But if not, like I said, I think the Raiders will have a really good shot to at least get the second wild card spot. So it's either going to win the division or get that second wild card. I think Buffalo's got an easy schedule, too, and they'll probably get the first wild card. But, you know, great win. Just enjoy Raider Nation. Best team effort game. Um, Just really proud of, you know, Derek Carr, Jacobs, the offensive line, um, and, uh, you know, Farrell stepping up, you know, and Eric Harris and, you know, what, 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 and Carl Joseph. And just what a great team win. I'm just really proud of the Raiders, and uh, let's enjoy Raider Nation. On to the winless Bengals here in about you know a week and a half. Let's enjoy it. Go Raiders! We're back, folks. We are back. The Raiders are back. Believe it, baby. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy it, and happy Veterans Day to all who served. Thank you, Raider Trucker Dan, and absolutely happy Veterans Day to all of you that have served and uh, put your lives on the line protecting our freedoms and uh, allowed for knuckleheads like me and uh, the rest of the RFR crew to sit around and do podcasts about uh, about you know 
things like football that are uh, non-consequential in terms of uh, real life. So appreciate you all uh, very much. Thank you for that, including uh, Uncle Mosh and uh, folks like uh, Ray Ramon, uh, a lot of good friends of the show and a lot of people in our listening audience. So thank you to all of you. Um, Also, Dan, that's number three by my count. You are a made man. You showed you are part of the family by participation. By chance, a man like yourself should make enemies, then they would become my enemies. Showing you are a friend of Raiders Fan Radio, you have leapt across the line. Friendship is everything. Friendship is more than talent. It is more than the government. It's almost equal to family. Be loyal. Made man, Raider fan. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But until that day, accept this as a gift. And don't ever forget, words can hurt more, but silence can break hearts. Awesome stuff, Raider Trucker Dan. Thank you, my friend. And you are now part of the RFR crew. You are part of the made men and one made woman, uh, Queen Haley of Scotland. So appreciate you and your participation and your support of us here at Raiders Fan Radio. Hey, what's up, guys? Ruben in Vegas checking in. Just caught the latest episode of Raider Fan Radio. Uh, crazy. What a game against the Chokers. Uh, had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Um, great win, team effort win. We had our little salt and pepper, Crosby and Pharrell doing their thing. Jacobs, man, damn, that kid got heart, man. That, that, that kid, you know, good player all around, young man. Uh, anyways, uh, final drive, you know, just to let you guys know that this song, that final drive, man, to come back to win the game, uh, fourth quarter was, you know, just going through my head right here. Autumn wind, baby. Nice. You know, just crazy, man. Crazy win, crazy game, good game. You know, Oakland was just bumping. You know, the atmosphere was just rocking out there, you know, watching it on TV. Be there this weekend coming up, a week from tomorrow. Uh, Go Raiders, man. I love my team. I love Oakland. I love the Raiders. Win, lose, or tie. Raiders till I die. Beat them bungles. I'm out. All right. Appreciate the phone call, Ruben. Great job as always, buddy. And yeah, man, let's beat the bungles. Like, I mean, this is like a classic setup for the old, you know, the overlook game, the look past game, the like all the adages, right? But the next two are so winnable. And it's, you know, this is going to be like one of those crossroads of the season for us that if the Raiders really are going to be anything, then these, not only the Bengals, but the Jets too, these are two that we should be able to rattle off. And I mentioned at the top of the show, this, you know, really should be a blowout, but wins are W's or W's. It doesn't matter if it's by one or by 50, but there should be, a decisive nature to this to really. And even to the next two games, there should be somewhat of a decisive nature uh, to the, to these games. And, you know, and then we'll be sitting at a nice seven and four. Like how nice does that sound? We were talking about like a nine and seven season or, a, a, a you know, on the good side, a 10 win year. And uh, there would, we'd be just be three victories away from that. So, Pretty good. I don't want to get too crazy and get too far ahead of ourselves, but but it's looking pretty good. Hey, guys, it's Cousin Ryan. Just wanted to give a shout-out to Murph, Swag Jeff, and Uncle Mosh. Had a great time with you guys at the game. Raider Nation was unbelievable. The tailgate was amazing. The game was great. And uh, love you guys' show. Keep it up, and you guys are doing great. Take care. Cousin Ryan, what's up, dude? Appreciate the phone call, Cousin Ryan, and uh, call two more times and you can become a made man. And uh, really, that get made shirt will look even better on you. And, you know, Cousin Ryan is a Broncos fan, so that takes a lot of cojones to call in here to the uh, old Raiders fan radio. We appreciate him, and we're trying to convert him. We're all about conversion. We're all, we'll convert you to all kinds of stuff around here. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll preach our faith, and we'll preach our Raider Nation faith at you, too. You know what I mean? We're all about that stuff. So, anyway, so we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to bring Ryan 
into the light. We're not having a come to Jesus meeting. We're having a come to Davis meeting with him. It's like, come on, Ryan, just come on over here, man. You've been to more Raider games with us than you've been to Bronco games in your life for crying out loud. Come on over into Raider Nation. We'll dunk you in the damn pool. Hey, 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 Raider faithful. Murph, Uncle Mosh, Swag the Prez Jeff, free world leader of the Jess Club, the capital, Mr. Q-Dog Raider himself, Ron the Enforcer Sutton, Sir Paul, his lordship, Sergeant at Arms, Open Raider Trucker, Rev Raider, and the Just Win Baby, or should I say, Baby Sizzler. Give that young and a great big hug. And to all the other made men and women, respect. This is the Big Easy here, first time caller, and in my mind, made man. I just got to say, dig in the show, fellas. So I figured I've been sitting here listening to the show and all the callers long enough. Time to call myself. First of all, I'm, a, I'm proud to be a Raider fan. Over 50 years and so many fantastic memories, and at my age, I have forgotten more than I'll ever remember, for sure. But I still remember in my soul. Players like LaMonica, with that sweet arm of his, that golden arm. No, the silver and black arm. Matt Millen, who anyone who got to see him play bled silver and black every single play. Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes, together shutting down opposing quarterbacks. Dave Castor, the legend, and then Todd Christensen comes along, and we don't miss a beat at tight end. George Blanda kicking the extra point after he just threw the touchdown pass. Jim Otto in that O-line giving Blanda and Stabler days and days to throw the ball. Man, I could go on forever. So many memories. But back to the reason I got up the ambition to call in the first place. Murph, Mosh, Swag the Prez, and how proud I was of you guys for, and all the Raider Nation who helped contribute to the Blitnikoff Foundation, way to represent in the silver and black way. Glass raised high, I salute you. The memories you will have of this trip, the people, the friends, the new friends, and all the Oakland greats and greats to be, all the laughs you had, enjoy it. Enjoy it forever. Murph, I want to thank you personally for all your hard work and professionalism with this channel and also for letting Uncle Mosh and Swag the Prez Jeff tag along. I know Uncle Mosh works cheap, I'm guessing, a dozen or two glazed donuts and Bavarian cream donuts, and he's happy. <laughs> swag the press looks like he'll work just to be near you two. <laughs> Sorry, Swag, me being a Jeff and all, too, but I'm just calling it like I see it. Murph is the brains of this motley crew. Unless there's a math involved, unless there's math involved <laughs> then you're all f And I grudgingly say that Swag the press is a valuable asset. As long as names with two syllables or more don't have to be read, then he's golden. <laughs> But seriously, I just called to say thank you for all the laughs I get from you guys, and especially Chat Room Nation, who practically make me piss my pants. <laughs> and it's not because I have an enlarged prostate. I know you feel me, Uncle Mosh, and by the looks of it, Murph, too. Thank you all for making an old man actually an old Raider fan laugh. Uh, that's too funny. Google Voice has claimed you. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Big Easy Jeff. You were killing it, dude. Uh, that was funny. That was a very, very good call. Looks like uh, looks like Jeff called us back. And uh, since this is the Sea of Fan show, we will extend some grace on the Google Voice getting you. And uh, let's. See, I think he's out of uh, Coach Davis's trunk now. So let's go ahead and, uh, and let Jeff finish off his call. All right. This is Big Easy again. Just wanted to say P.S. and also Google Bone can kiss my ass. <laughs> I wanted to finish what I had to say. Do it, brother. Before I hung up. And um, I just was appreciative of how you guys did at the Raider at the Butnikov Foundation. I really appreciated it. And, uh, you know, you guys make me laugh. You guys crack me up, Dad. Chat Room Nation is hysterical. They literally make me piss my pants every week. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. And I get to kick back for a couple hours every week, enjoy a couple of yinglings. And, uh, just want to get a few things of the Raiders off my chest. First off, believe in what Mayak and Gruden are doing here. Derek Carr is our quarterback, and if you didn't believe it before the Chargers game, believe it now. Carr has moxie. Mosh, that word was for you. Our old line is as good as we've had since Dalby, Upshaw, and Shaw. Come on. Excuse me, Dolby, Upshaw, and Shell. We're young and we're getting better. The team has got a lot of fighters. 
up and down the roster. They play with heart, and that's all I ask. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, have a couple yinglings, Raider Nation for life, baby. In the words of one Mikey, the Professor Raider, let's go. God bless. The big easy is, the Sergeant at Arms would say, I'm 10 tight on the side. Later. Nicely done, Big Easy Jeff. That is a that's a great call, and not just because of the love that you extended out to us here at Raiders Fan Radio, but uh, very, very well done, very funny, and uh, and great takes. And man, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I, I appreciate all the kind words, man. I appreciate uh, uh, you, you know you lifting us up and how we represented, and you know, we really and I hope this came across, and I hope we did a good job of representing you all because. We none of that stuff happens. None of that Bolitnikov stuff happens. And you know, I was just looking through some of the stuff even tonight. And, and Angela Bolitnikov was so kind to to recognize us on her Facebook page today and put up a nice post and picture of us and thanked us for the donation. And you know, and immediately I want I responded to it and it's and let her, let everybody know that it was because of you all. It's not because of us. You know, we didn't scratch a check uh, without you guys. And, and, and we don't represent that without you guys. And we don't make the trip and do all that without you all. And so anyways, I, I hope that came across and uh, because it, it's genuine. It's so anyways, you know, we love you. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And thank you, Jeff, uh, for your very, very kind words and keep those. I keep calling you Jeff. It's big, easy. Keep those calls coming, dude. That was great. That was great. Uh, even though Google Voice got you. Uh, and, you know, hey, I think you might be the first one out of the gate to get Google Voice. That was pretty fun, man. So, anyways, keep those coming. Murph, what's up? This is Don, Donald Thomas, or Super Deuce, or whatever. Deuce, really. Hey, um, not particularly uh, trying to get this before Google, Google Voice gets me. <laughs> I have an extra ticket to the Jaguars game. I'm not sure how to – I'm trying to more or less, uh, I guess, my, my buddy ain't going to be able to go. I'm trying to donate it to Mikey or something like that. Um, not really sure how to get a hold of them. Um, more or less, there's a bunch of it to it, but it's real good tickets, and I think he, him, or you, one of you guys should definitely be at the last game. So, again, my name is Donald. You see me on Facebook, I'm sure. I'm Super Deuce, you guys are even, even remotely interested. It's um, Section 114, Row 5, Seats 3 and 4 I have. So, hey, man, thanks. Y'all have a good one, man. Talk to y'all soon. Oh, my gosh. That is amazingly kind of you, Deuce. I really – I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and I know if the other two guys were here, uh, they would echo the same sentiment. I would love – to be able to go to the last game. Uh, unfortunately, just family and work commitments are going to prevent uh, myself and, and Mosh and Swag from traveling all the way out there, but that is incredibly kind of you to offer that. Uh, man, I, I as a Raider fan and as a, a diehard and as, as many of all of, of you are as well, it's like it's you know literally one of those things where like if there was a way for me to make it happen and have it make even remotely any kind of sense in my life, I would make that go uh but i just i I, i'm just not going to be able to make the trip but i can't uh tell you enough how much i appreciate your kindness appreciate you thinking of us and uh that's just that's that's awesome man and that's family right there man that's what raider nation is is all about is uh is looking out for one another so i appreciate that thank you very very much what is up family this is jc raider checking in from southern california so usually i hear everybody start with uncle murph mosh but you know what? I'm going to show Swaggy some love. Hey! What's up, Swag Jeff? What's up, Uncle Mosh? And what's up, Murph? Thank you. Capo and the rest of the made men. This is my second time calling. So I'll be calling one more time. There you go. I'll be calling one more time, and we'll see what, we, we'll see if I get that made man status. But, uh, yeah, it's a JC Raider checking in. Man, I'm pumped. That game was ridiculous. I actually uh, got to fly out to the game. Me and my buddy, we got some tickets. Uh, last second tickets from, uh, I'm assuming it was uh, a season ticket holder because we actually sat in section 218, which if you guys are familiar with the Coliseum, that's right underneath all of the suites. So to my left, I had Bill Ramanowski. He was literally five feet above us. To my right, we had the, the Fox crew and the NFL Network crew. I think they were in the same, the same section, but I got to see Joe Buck. And, man, these seats were so exclusive that we had our own personal bar section. We had our own little deli. Uh, when we when we actually got into the stadium, we had to have the uh, purple wristband just so we could get to our section, which I had no idea that we even bought. The tickets were expensive as heck, but 
but I didn't know where we were actually sitting until we got there. We had to walk through this glass door, real exclusive, just to get to our seats. But, man, it was an experience. It was lit. Raider Nation, they came out. Uh, Philip Philip Rivers had no idea what to do when, when Raider Nation was loud, man. We were shouting, uh, we got a dub. We got a dub against the L.A. Chargers. The L.A. Super Chokers or the London Chargers now. I don't even know. Who cares? But anyways, fam, I wanted to call out. And uh, I was actually trying to call during the game or halftime or something, but I got to say I was inebriated. <laughs> so you would have just heard a bunch of Raiders the whole time. All right, fellas, you guys have a blessed night. JC Raider out. All right, JC Raider, appreciate the call, man. That's awesome, dude. And, man, those seats are killer. Uh, we had the good fortune of, if you guys remember, I want to say it was 2014 or 15. I can't remember what year it was. The year, I think it was 14, the year that Terrell Pryor beat the Chargers on the latest uh, uh, Sunday night game ever. It was on the game, it was a Sunday night. It was the time when the, the Coliseum actually flipped over from an A's playoff game into a Raider game in less than 24 hours. They turned the Coliseum uh, turf over. Anyways, we sat in a very, I can't remember what section it was, but it was very similar. And I, and I remember all those things, the bar and the glass doors and all that. And that's where we, we met Jim Plunkett and Willie Brown because they were just roaming around the concourse. I, actually, I think Bl- Plunkett, we kind of flagged down. He was on his way somewhere, uh, probably to go do color commentary. But Willie Brown was just kind of like, like walking around, just like meeting people and like shaking hands and taking pictures and all that. And it was Really, really cool. Yeah, those are those are awesome seats uh, there in the Oakland Coliseum. And so I uh, appreciate the call, J.C. Raider. He called again. And so since this is all sea of fans, I'm going to play it. But you still got to call one more time to uh, officially become a made man. Hey, what's up, guys? This is J.C. Raider calling in real quick. Fellas, you don't count this as my third call, okay? I don't want to be <laughs> a made man off of this call because this call is just a follow-up. More of a request. For the most part, I listen to you guys on Spotify. I also watch the YouTube. I watch you guys live sometimes under JC24BRM. But uh, mostly I, I listen to you guys on Spotify while I'm at work. So, uh, yeah, man, you guys haven't really been posting the material on Spotify recently. Yeah, I, don't know I, if, know. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but, I mean, I, I miss the tell from the nation. You know what I mean? And uh, I miss you guys. I, miss, I just miss listening, listening to you guys on Spotify because it's the easiest access for me. I don't always, uh, I can't always be streaming <laughs> you guys live at work, but I can be listening to you guys. So, uh, hey, man, you guys could post some more material on Spotify. I'd appreciate it. I know how you guys always say that the more, the more rated material that we can get, the better. So, uh, yeah, man, I'd appreciate it if y'all post on Spotify a little bit more often. But, uh, hey, don't make this my, my third call in my made man status because I don't want it to be. But, uh, so yeah. I'll, uh, JC Raider out and I'll be tuning in to you guys. Peace. I right, appreciate it, JC Raider. Okay, so here's what's going on. So we started this new thing. Uh, we have a new podcast service that's helping us with our distribution. And so there was a little bit of a lull, a little bit of a hangover. Number one, we hadn't been posting anything other than Raiders fan radio for a while. Uh, we had a little bit of a lull in the fan club blitz, which is back up and running now. Uh, we had a little bit of a lull with Mondays with Mike and Murph. That's going to start again this next Monday. We had a little bit of a lull with Tales from the Nation. Uh, Swago and I are going to record one of those this week. Uh, and then you get this. Uh, plus, we got an RFR conversation coming with our buddy Scott Winter. That will be coming soon as well. So our content has just kind of really kind of uh, slid back a little bit mainly to do with all the travel and all the other crap we had going on. Plus there was some, some life circumstance around uh, Mondays with Mikey and Murph and, and uh, even the fan club blitz, we had some mix ups on some stuff. So anyways, it all just kind of happened uh, at the same time, but it, uh, appreciate that. Pay attention to that Spotify feed. You might have to search us again, there, there's a possibility there's another feed for Murph's fan cave, but it should pick up, uh, even though we've switched our, uh, kind of our back end, uh, provider, uh, it should, uh, populate back in your same feed, but if it's not, you might want to search for it again, uh, to see if it's there. And so I appreciate you sticking with us and apologize to those of you that had any lulls in your audio subscriptions. Uh, but that stuff should, uh, should kind of all catch back up and, and, uh, you'll get everything plus all of our brand new content, uh, coming there. So appreciate you very much. JC Raider. No, I won't count that as your third call us one more time and you will become a made man. What's good, Raider Nation, Murph, Mosh, Swag, Jeff? 
Capo Q, Mojo, everybody, Raider Nation, what's up? Just one Johnny. Just a quick question, non-Raider related. Mojo, or actually Mojo, Mosh, with the uh, Mandalorian coming out recently, I just wanted to get your thoughts on the end of the episode. It was mind-blowing, if you ask me. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but uh, I don't know if is a huge fan of The Mandalorian and the end of the first episode. I just watched it. I woke up and watched it before work. Mind-blowing, Mosh. Get you some. Just with Johnny, out. I wish Uncle Mosh was here to address that question because uh, that would be really fun to watch uh, watch him get mad at me for giving you a Star Wars take. I'll keep it brief, uh, and I'll, I'll keep it spoiler-free because you don't tune into a Raiders show expecting to get a spoiler in terms of uh, a Star Wars show. But, man, I'll just say this. Johnny, the Mandalorian is amazing. The ending is amazing. Uh, we loved it, man. The Western motif, uh, the, the imagery of it all. Uh, it's just an incredibly well done show. It's literally like watching a movie. It's 39 minutes of star Wars glory. Uh, man, that was, that's badass, man. It is very, very good. And, uh, it's so cool to see that, uh, represented man on, on the, on a Disney plus, and we're going to get another one on Friday. And then, uh, man, I'm hooked. I'm hooked already. It's, it's so, so good. So can't wait to see where that, uh, series is going to go. This is just when Johnny calling back. Frankly, that's what I do. Johnny two <laughs> times. Anyways, I'm calling back because actually what we should do for a game is fashion up a costume, the uncle Marshall Lorian, and we can fashion his armor out of donuts and put it together with belly button lint and things like that. <laughs> so we'll just have a giant bounty hunter armor of, of donuts. What do you want? My strawberry glaze, French color. You look, you look like an eclair kind of guy. I don't know. But the Mashalorian, we got to do this. <laughs> Johnny, out. The Mashalorian, that's pretty funny. Appreciate the call, Just Win Johnny. I think that's your second call. I don't count the the same show, so I think you got to call one more time. And then Just Win Johnny uh, is uh, poised to become a made man. Uh, and you know, let me say this too. In terms of Mandalorians, our buddy Kevin, the Raider nerd, has the lock on Mandalorians. He was the Raider Mandalorian way before. Uh, anybody else started any of that stuff. And, uh, you know, Kevin, the Raider nerd is, he doesn't come by that title dishonestly. He is, uh, he is absolutely a nerd, has an amazing podcast network himself, the fandom podcast network. And he is a massive Star Wars fan and rocks that Raider gear, rocks that, that, you know, Mando suit with the Raider stuff on it. Uh, it's, it's, it's badass. It's good stuff there. So, uh, as much as I appreciate, the the idea of the Masha Lorian, I think, uh, in terms of Raider dumb, uh, Kevin's got the lock on that. What's up, Murph? What's up, Uncle Marsh? Swag Jeff? Capo? Aaron the Q-Dog? <laughs> Raider? It's your boy, May Man Sizzler, award-winning Coach Davis. What's up to the rest of the May men? You know, uh, five and four. And don't talk to me about no damn wild card, man. Let's get that AFC West title. Boy. Let's handle that. Let's Come on. get that. Come on. You know what I mean? Now, we can't overlook the Bengals. We can't overlook the Jets. We can't o- overlook anybody. We got to go in there playing them like we play in the Queefs every week, bring everything we got, dismantle them. Another thing, man, I'm really sad to see KJ go down, man. I do not like that. A lot of you are uh, saying that, uh, not a lot of y'all, but a lot of Raider Nation are saying they don't want – Carl Joseph back. I don't understand why not. You know what I mean? I mean, this dude uh, makes people think about what are they going to do when they go across the middle. He lays the wood on people. I mean, come on. Think about that when y'all talking about not resigning about him flying through the hole and spearing fools like he's Goldberg. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or climbing invisible ladders to reject game-winning touchdowns. Think about that. Climbing invisible ladders and jumping off of invisible buildings and intercept balls. I know he's 4'11", but the dude plays like he's 7'2". You know what I'm saying? Carl, wish I was a little bit taller. Carl Joseph? Come on, man. We got to keep that dude, man. We need to keep the consistency in that defense and that secondary, man. That's all I got today, man. I love y'all. Much respect. I'm going to be going to Oakland this weekend. I'm going to go see nice. what's up with the uh, Pillaging, uh, the Pillaging podcast. Tailgate, what they got going over there. I'm going to say what's up to Kenny and Che. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's it, man. I hope I'll uh, get to run into some of you made men. I'll be wearing my uh, my shirt. Coach Davis going to have 32 on it. 
So a little for me, man. I'm be with a little Harley Raider at and you know, Mama Coach. You know what I'm saying? So uh you see me say what's up, man. I hope I see some of y'all there, man. I'm out. Love y'all. Awesome stuff, Coach Davis. Yeah, tell Kenny and Che hi from us at Raiders Fan Radio. And man, that's you're gonna have so much fun. And I love to hear that it's a family affair, man. That's what it's all about. I appreciate that. And you know, great take on Carl Joseph. You know, uh being uh, you know, one half of the lollipop kids back there playing safety, he really brought it this year, man. And you know, I think he, he he's earned it. I the sad thing is that someone's going to give him more than the Raiders are going to be willing to give him. And that's the downside. And that's what typically we find with the free agents that, that leave the Raiders is that there's somebody out there willing to make, I don't want to call it a stupid offer, but a disproportionate market offer. And so I think that the Raiders are fully you know, keen on keeping the guy, but I don't think they're keen on keeping him for the amount of money that he's going to get on the open market. He'll go join Kevin Bayard and play in Tennessee or something. You know what I mean? Like there's somewhere else that he'll go that someone will be willing to pay him. So I got a gut. My gut feeling says that his, his time as a Raider is, is done. Uh, but I'm certainly not rooting for that. I'm, I'm with you. I think that he's earned it. He's a playmaker and he's really shown it, whether it's because it's a contract year or not. I don't know, man, but the guy has certainly, uh, uh, earned a spot on this roster and, uh, and earned his, uh, you know, he's earned his Raider badge, man. So I hope he comes back. All right. All right. How y'all doing? Uncle Marsh, Murph, Swag Jeff. Hey, Lil Jeff. Uh, Murph's son. I forgot his name. Lil Vinny. Hey. Hey, Lil there Vinny. you go. Hey, forget about it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just calling, uh, just want to rap a little bit with you guys. I had, a, you know, something was on my mind. Um, as a, I'm a truck driver out in California, out inland, you know, so I get to listen to radio all day, just listen to everything, everyone, every, everything everyone says about the Raiders. And I just wanted to say that I think, and I want you guys' opinion, of course, shout out everybody in the family, Raider Nation, what up? Uh, I just, I just think it can't be understated, especially since the way that the new regime is drafting and all. I just think that it can't be understated understated enough how bad of a job Reggie McKenzie did. I mean, we have not no I don't think we have any players from the the twenty thirteen draft other than Derek Carr, Gabe Jackson. Um I think that's it. Everyone else is everyone else is gone. I, I mean it, it can't I don't think that it can be said enough how bad of a job that he did picking players and how bad the last regime did at picking players. We have five hits in this draft. Five hits five hits we probably picked the best tight end we probably picked one of the best edge rushers um we got a we got a very nice we got a very nice corner the best running back and mark my words jonathan abram's going to be a beast i mean that's four that's four or five guys right there and reggie couldn't hit with one not one i mean maybe one maybe two guys i don't know just I, that's something i'm just thinking about if you guys just just let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. Google Voice is coming, so I got to go. Raider Nation, <laughs> much love and respect. Let's bring it home strong. Awesome stuff there, man. Appreciate the phone call. Great job. And, yeah, man, I. It's at this point, it's hard to argue against that, isn't it? Like, it's hard to argue against the idea that Reggie McKenzie was not a great evaluator of talent. You know, it's it's look, you got guys like Khalil Mack and Derek Carr, like, you know, that kind of fell into his lap. And, you know, and I don't want to downplay – uh, his abilities that much, but you know, look, well, what does the evidence tell us so far? The evidence so far tells us that, you know, he wasn't, the, he wasn't the best. And now to keep it positive, he did a really good job of getting us out of a really bad situation in terms of our salary cap. We had a lot of unhealthy contracts. The big knock against Al Davis towards his latter years was that he made some, some, you know, I'm going to call him dumb, but some very, um, I don't know. <sighs> short-sighted offers and short-sighted deals to questionable players. And he also made some questionable draft picks. So coming out of that, Reggie did a really good job of getting us healthy. But it's always like you want that. It's like the middle guy, like the guy that gets you healthy. And then you got the next guy that comes in to help you win a championship, right? Like you have, it's the Mark Jackson to Steve Kerr, right? Mark Jackson was a, was a fine coach, but it took Steve Kerr to get the championship. Well, maybe in this case, it took Reggie McKenzie to get us healthy, to go through and, and take the bullets, take the barbs, like to be the guy to get, you know, down and dirty and to really go through the toughest of times. And then here comes Mike Mayock, the genius talent evaluator that he is. And he starts, you know, 
with all these loaded with all these draft picks that we have uh, starts loading the team up with talent. So uh, it's a it's a very very fair point, and we will certainly see where it goes uh, in the next couple of years. Because uh, as we all know, drafts are not you know, defined in the first year. You just can't do it. It takes two or three even years before you can really, truly look back. And and look, that's where we're at with Reggie. We're now getting to that point where we're, you know, four years out, five years out, six years out, right? We're already starting to see where these players are shaking out. And not only with the Raiders, but then when they leave the Raiders, what do they do? Where's Shalik Calhoun nowadays? Right. You know what I mean? So we kind of get an idea uh, of where these players uh, are, are ending up in terms of their, you know, their their value in the NFL. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out certainly in the next uh, year or two with uh, with John Gruden and uh, and Mike Mayock. Raider Nation, this is Daniel Mangus once again calling Daniel. from Fremont, California. I just have to say one thing. Everything we want for the season, everything this team has talked about, that's all in front of us. With the Chiefs losing and only a game and a half behind, we could be playing for the division when we go to Kansas City. I'm so hyped. I'm so excited. This team is turning the corner. And everyone who doubted us, how do you like us now? Yeah. How do you like us now? All the haters can eat it. Great <laughs> nation for life. Come on, Daniel. Love it. Love it. Great call there from Daniel. And, yeah, man, I'm with you. You know, it's funny how everybody comes out of the woodwork when the team starts stringing some wins together. And I guess it's like that in any sport, and it's like that with with uh, with any of the, the media. There are a handful, though, that have had our back since early on. You know, the Good Morning Football crew, you know, Brian Baldinger. There's a handful, man, of people that have, that have kind of, you know, called out the Raiders' praises early on and weren't overly critical about John Gruden and the Raiders. It's very few. There, there aren't a lot, but, uh, but they are certainly starting to come out now. So I appreciate that, Daniel. And I'm with you, dude. The, this has been the most optimistic I've been about a Raider team in an awful long time. And now I don't know if that's because going into the season, I was like, okay, we're going to win four games and that's going to be it. Like, you know, I, I've said it numerous times that I was relieved of the burden of expectation going into this season. So I don't know if coming out of that, like, you know, expecting the worst and hoping for the best because I come in out of that. And then all of a sudden we've won five games. So like, you know, that contrast and that, that, you know, tip of the scales has gotten me too fired up, but I would suspect that that's kind of the case for a lot of you as well, that there's a lot of reason to uh, to be excited about this football team. We just look good. They just look good. There's so many years where I was like watching the Raiders play. It's like, Almost like you're watching a different sport, like right? Like you watch the Packers and Patriots play, like after a Raider game, and you're like, this is like a different sport. Like they're not playing the same game we are because you watch a Raider game and it's like a series of disappointments and folly, right? Um, you know, and we're constantly a victim of the Raiders' folly. Where it doesn't feel like that this year. We're not a constant victim of their folly, and they're playing pretty well. And, you know, D.C. is captain comeback again, and sometimes he doesn't even have to be. Uh, you know, although three of them were comeback wins, two of those games, like we won, uh, like we would hope this week, uh, you know, not decisively, but, you know, you felt pretty good about it during the, the entire course of the game. So, anyways, good stuff there. Appreciate it, Daniel. And next up, who do we got here? I don't know. Let me hit the button. I don't know. Let me hit the button. What's going on, Murph? Rev Raider. Oh, my swag, Jeff, the nation. This is Rev Raider calling from Jersey. Trying to get my little thoughts in real quick. Definitely excited about that dub. You know, um, I, I would definitely say a dude with mad kids balled out, but it wasn't <laughs> Rivers. <laughs> and Harris, he balled out. He yeah. had a hell of a game, man. I guess he he saw himself on Capo's hit list, and he was like, he was like that dude from Gladiator when he was talking to Russell Crowe. You know, you could go be with your family, but not yet. You know, nice. but uh, definitely loved the game. I was souped about it. You know, definitely excited about anything that happened. And our rookies are showing some signs of life. Um, and in, in, in all facets of football, you know, every time you move up a level. You always got to adjust to the game speed, and it takes a second. And now that we're like halfway through the season, it seems like a lot of our rookies, they're starting to to catch up with that game speed, and we're starting to see some of the fruits of their labor. And so I think that's dope. You know, they, they, they're, doing, they're doing the daggone thing. You know, uh, Mike Mayock was even talking about some, some of the uh, rookies, how he's saying he's, Cautiously optimistic about Josh Jacobs, you know, even Cleveland Farrell, like how they were basically 
not putting him in his natural position, and they were moving him around a lot, so they weren't doing him any favors. But uh, they're balling out, and that's what I love to see, you know. I even love to see some of these um, commentators now eating humble pie, you know, on Come these on. sports networks, you yep. know. It's it's funny seeing them starting to uh, ride on uh, Derek Carr's Johnson a little something, you know, <laughs> nut hugging as Coach Davis would say. But as I could say, they're like they're literally reaching because now he's raising the bar too high. Nice, you know? but definitely excited. You know, we in position. Kansas City lost. Let's get it. You know, we have we we have an opportunity to move up. You know, and like not even just think about a wild card. You know. We could also think about, you know, go ahead and getting that top spot in our division. You know, so I'm excited about it. Let's go get these daggone Bengals next week. We can't underestimate our opponent. We just got to grind out and make it happen, you know. And like I said at the beginning, before the season began, why not us? But that's all I got. I'll talk to you guys later, man. Always love the show. Keep doing your thing. Peace. Nice job, Rev Raider. Always enjoy the calls, my friend. Uh, good stuff there from uh, from Rev. And, yeah, man, he called it early on. He was like, you know what? I'm not trying to hear about how, you know, we're going to have limited expectations and all that. He was like, no, like, I expect them to win. I expect them to play well. If John Gruden is who we think he is and Derek Carr is who we hope he's going to be, and if this draft class is what, they're, what we think they're going to be, like, why not us? And you know what? And we were ready to run through a wall after uh, his call way back then, and and it hasn't lost its smoke, man. I'm with you, Rev, man. I'm, I'm excited about the year, and I, I really, like, my head and my heart are really in, 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 in a fight this year over my fandom because I, I really want to get excited, but I don't want to, you know, we don't want to get beat up, man. How many times have we got beat up, man? We got beat up a lot, but uh, I'm with you, man. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of good uh, going on with the team, and so anyways, great stuff there uh, from Rev Raider. Appreciate the phone call, and uh, all right, we got one more to get to before we get out of here for the night. Appreciate you all sticking around for the sea of fans. Uh, after this one, we will certainly get in a, uh, a Sizzler's. Good day, everybody. This is Sugar Shane calling from Sugar the Shane. state of Texas. Come on. Right now, I'm on my lunch break right now, and uh, this will be my third call, so I guess this is uh, this is the main man style now, style and profiling, and the main men and gentlemen, um, and ladies. So, um, long story short, I've come to realize that with this fanhood and we, with me putting on the silver and black every day. I come to realize haters are going to hate, but real fans knows what, no, you know, knows what's up. But, uh, I got a question for Murph and this is for anybody in the chat. Uh, as far as the biggest, the most hate, I would say that you should, or that you received, what's the, what's the silver lining to being a Raiders fan? What's the, uh, I guess I'm trying to ask, what's the best thing about being a Raiders fan? Out of all the thir- of the 31 teams in the league, what's the one thing that separates us, or several other things that separates us from the rest of the teams in the league? Uh, and I'll tell you one thing, that's heart and the will to win. Uh, the will to play your ass off every single game and try to capture that victory. And uh, Google Voice, you're not going to get me this time, so don't even think about it. Anyways, much love, guys. Appreciate everything you do. And uh, shout out to Mojo. Shout out to Big Raider Trucker, Raider Ramon, uh, Rev Raider, and the top of the top of the food chain, Mr. Capo himself, Aaron the Q Dog Raider. So much love, guys. And I'll see you next time. I'll call in next time. So, peace out. All right, Sugar Shane, appreciate the call. Great job. And yes, you are officially now a made man. But before, or made man, before I get to the music, though, and uh, I gotta, I gotta acknowledge a, a couple things there. Uh, so you asked what my favorite thing was about. Uh, and I, and I'm going to extend this question to Mosh and Swago next week when we're back on RFR Live. And then again, because and I really want to see the chat too. Favorite thing about being a Raider fan for me, there's a lot of things about the Raiders. I love the mystique of the team. I love the imagery of the team. I love the um, 
the perception of the team when you don the silver and black and you go out in public, especially in a place that's out of market, uh, whether it's where I live in Tennessee or the like you're up in the Northeast or you're in Texas where you all are, you know, the responses and the, the looks even that you get from people. I like that. I like all that stuff. I like being the villain of the NFL. Darth Vader is my favorite Star Wars character. Well, really kind of Obi-Wan too, but I like the light and the dark. But really it's Darth Vader, right? It's the it's the visage. It's the it's the it's the the bad guy, man. Like I like the bad guy. I like movies like Goodfellas because I like the bad guys. It's th- those all those things aside, those are very personal things, you know, from just the colors and all that stuff. But my absolute slam dunk most favorite thing about the Raiders is family. There's no mistaking. It's Raider Nation. It's the reason that it's our our moniker, and it's the reason that we get so ill when other people take the term nation, and all it takes is one stroll through the Raider tailgate. We, just this last week or a week and a half ago now, had an opportunity to go to the game, and we had people come around from all over the country to collectively join in in this Raider fandom and celebrate our fandom with one another. And it's just like they've been friends and family forever. Now, granted, we have a certain amount of connectivity with this show and all that kind of stuff, but it's that that sense of brotherhood and family, sisterhood. It's just, it's unmatched. It's just no other team does it like we do. The sense of community that's involved, the sense of giving back. And there's a lot of charitable foundations and a lot of charitable organizations around NFL teams. But the fans perpetuate so much of that in terms of the Raiders. And that is, again, an extension of family. You take care of your own, man. Like, that's what family does. We take care of our own. And so that's what my my biggest source of pride in this team is that sense of family, that sense of nation, that sense of community. And so it's, it's, it's unmatched. And so that's a great question. And I can't wait to talk to the other guys about it. And again, I can't wait to hear what everybody uh, in the chat has to say about it. All right. So let's go ahead and hit the made man music. And then I got a sizzler to award. You are a made man. You showed you are part of the family by participation. By chance, a man like yourself should make enemies, then they would become my enemies. Showing you are a friend of Raiders Fan Radio, you have leapt across the line. Friendship is everything. Friendship is more than talent. It is more than the government. It's almost equal to family. Be loyal. Made man, Raider fan. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But until that day, accept this as a gift. And don't ever forget, words can hurt more, but silence can break hearts. All right, congratulations, Sugar Shane, your third call, and you are now officially part of the crew and you are one of the made men here in Raiders Fan Radio. I had two of those tonight. That's awesome. Uh, man, fun, fun stuff hearing from everybody. We had so many calls. Again, we were gonna, just going to flat out take this week off, but we had so many great calls. Uh, we wanted to honor that and, and, and hear from everybody and, uh, man, and, and, and put it out there because this is what you guys are what this show is all about. And so uh, thank you to the, all of you that have called tonight. Some fantastic calls. Uh, this is pretty tough, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the, the first-time caller. I'm going to go with a guy that another Jeff, go figure, uh, another guy that reps Jeff Nation. He is the big easy, and congratulations on your sizzler. 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 That's right. Big easy, Jeff. Thank you. Even though Google Voice got you, man, that was a great phone call. I uh, appreciate the kind words, but that's not why I gave it to you. I gave it to you because it's really funny. Like, we're all about a good joke around here and especially poking fun at one another. So we appreciate you and appreciate all of you that called in tonight. We are Metallica, and we are here for your Oakland Raiders! You know why we are here, and we ain't playing around today! From The Walking Dead to errant Jedi Knights, Raiders fans are a rogues gallery. All right, 
thank you once again for joining us here in Murph's Fan Cave for another episode of uh, Raiders Fan Radio, a sea of fans edition of Raiders Fan Radio. Uh, thank you so many of you called in tonight, and uh, those were great calls, and we appreciate you. Uh, congratulations to uh, the Big Easy on his Sizzler Award. And uh, thank you uh, for those of you that subscribe to us via podcast. You can find us on any podcast service. So just search for Murph's Fan Cave. That's M-U-R-F-S Fan Cave. And hit the subscribe button. Never miss an episode of this show. Mondays with Mikey and Murph coming back next week. RFR conversation coming up this week. The Fan Club Blitz with Splatterhead Tom and Fitz just posted fresh this week. A new episode of Tales from the Nation with me and Swag Jeff as we explore the history of the Raiders. That's coming up uh, also this next week. And so subscribe there. And then also, if you want to do it on the video, you can find this on the YouTubes. That's youtube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. Look for us there on the YouTubes. Smash the button. Hit the bell. Get notified. Find out whenever we go live and uh, and, and check us out and support us in that way. So thank you to all of... Uh, thank you to... Gosh, I mess that one up every time. Thank you to all of those of you that support the show. We appreciate you. We love you. Let's go, Raiders. Let's go out there and whip the bungles, man. This should be an absolute slam dunk. Come on, Paul Gunther. Going up against your old squad. Get it done. Go Raiders. I have an enlarged prostate. I know you feel me, Uncle Mosh. And by the looks of it, Murph too. Thank you all for making an old man actually an old Raider fan. Uh, That's too funny.